By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached the finals of the Northern Paladin Cup. So this is super exciting. We've had a whole series, right? Starting at round number one in the Swiss. And now we're at the final. So hopefully you've seen all that. You've been with me for that journey. I'm very excited to show you the finals today. And the finals are going to be between Baptiste, a player from Belgium. He's playing a line dip. And he's taking on Mari, a player from the Netherlands. He's also playing line dip. So we've got a nice mirror match final. And in a moment, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I've got beautiful pictures of both of these decks. And we're going to try to find maybe some subtle differences in their brews that maybe can give them a slight advantage uh, over their opponent. But before we do that, I would just like to point out that if you want to skip that section, if you want to go straight to the games, I know some of you do, the best way to do that is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it will take you straight to the action. The description is also very handy if you want to know more about the specific rule sets. Um, this tournament is played according to the Swedish rules with a reprint policy, so you can play with reprints here at this tournament. Um, Swedish means, just in a nutshell, that you cannot play with Fallen Empires and there's no mana burn. So just keep that in mind when you're watching this game. Um, okay, so that's it. I'm now going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Baptiste. Let's take a look at his version of Line Dip. And here are the decks of both players and not just of Baptiste, because when I was looking uh, at the the decks I thought maybe it's better for the overview to just look at both of them at the same time and we can try to spot some subtle differences between the builds so I'm just going to start with the deck of Mari uh, starting at the left top side and at the same time looking at the deck of Baptiste trying to find some differences so both players playing four surrenders both players playing four, four lines both players playing two angels both players playing two Psyblasts. Those are that Force of Nature, Natural Selection, Alters. Then on top of that, we actually see a difference between Mari's deck and Baptiste's deck, where Mari is playing two Power Sync. Those are those Skeleton Dudes. Um, Baptiste is playing zero. So that's quite interesting. I think Power Sync is especially powerful, of course, if you can ramp up quicker than your opponent. And usually when you're playing all the Moxin, you can. But he's now playing against an opponent that also has access to all the Moxin, of course. So it's really going to be... A matter of can Mari find some Moxen earlier to really use that power sync or of course when he's on the play he's a little bit ahead of the game as well. So then we see our two usual black card sus uh, uh, suspects, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist, both players playing with that. Four Swords, four Disenchants, both players playing with that. Four Counter Spells, one Mana Drain, again both players playing with that. We see a Brain Geyser, do we see a Brain Geyser in Baptiste's deck? Yes we do, so both players playing Brain Geyser. Both players playing with the blue power, although, no, both players playing with Time Twister as well. For a moment there, I thought, hey, is Baptiste not playing Time Twister? Yes, he is. Both players just playing fully powered. Both players playing Chaos Orb. I'm just saying both players a lot because that is what it is. Both players playing Balance. Both players playing Soul Ring. And um, so there are really very little differences here. You know, I think... We just have those two power sinks as a difference. And are we seeing a recall in the deck of Mari? I think Mari is not playing with recall main and Baptiste is playing with recall main. So that's a slight, a small difference. And maybe Baptiste has one extra mana, one extra land in his deck. We actually see looking at the mana base, we do see a lot of differences. So that's quite interesting, right? We see two basic islands, for example, on the side of Baptiste and two basic planes. Whereas in the deck of Mari, we only see one basic plane. That's the only basic he has. Of course, the idea behind playing with basic planes is it protects you against um, a possible uh, Blood Moon, you know. And that's not going to be the case in this matchup, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, it's quite interesting. Looking at the sideboards, we also see a lot of similarities. Again, some differences, though. I guess Mari has access to some more black sources, hence he can play with Sinkle in the sideboard. So we see two Sinkles there and an extra uh, Maze of If to try to stop creature strategies. He's not playing with Divine Offering, where Baptiste is playing with Divine Offering, so that's an interesting uh, difference. Also, Baptiste is playing Moat in the sideboard, and Mari is not playing Moat. And Mari is, of course, playing with a Northern Paladin there in the sideboard. So that is that is nice. That is flavorful, man. 
Uh, he's playing with one Sedina bottle, where Baptiste is playing with two Sedina bottles. So very subtle uh, differences here, and also differences in the sideboard that I think personally are not going to impact the game that much. But let me know in the comments below. I think this matchup is really going to be, of course, about skill of the player, but both of these players are very, very good. Uh, but most of all, it's going to be about luck of the draw. You know, if you can just draw better than your opponent, the, these decks can go really, really quick. If you kind of draw the right cards, it, 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 you, you can just put pressure on really, really quickly. Also, there are some key cards here in the deck that can kind of shift momentum. One of those cards is Mind Twist. The other one, of course, is also Balance. So a well-timed Mind Twist or a well-timed Balance that can be the decider in, you know, who's going to win this game and maybe eventually even the finals. Okay, we've looked at both of these decks. Let me know which one is your favorite and why. I'd love to know why because there are just so many similarities here. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we're, I guess we're ready to start. Let's go to the finals of the Paladins of the North Cup. Yeah. Game number one of the finals is about to begin. We've got Maddie sitting on the right. So he's starting with a Savannah Lines turn one. And we've got Baptiste sitting on the left. So both of these players playing line dip with only some subtle differences, such as Maddie playing with two power sync. There is a Mox Sapphire. Wow, look at this opening. Surrender a freed. Very aggressive opening here by Baptiste. And this could be immediate uh, problems here for Maddie. Hopefully for him, he's got, for example, a Swords. And he can Swords to surrender. There we see a strip mine. And he's in the tank already, trying to find out what to do. I'm expecting a Swords here on the Surrendip. There we see a Swords. Exactly. And you want to do it straight away because you don't want to give Baptiste a chance to untap with his two blue sources because then potentially he can counter the Swords of Mahdi. Remember, both of these decks are playing four counter spells and a Mana Drain. So it's not unrealistic that that could happen. I mean, a line of play of Mahdi could have been stripped the Tundra and then, you know, let Baptiste take that extra damage. But I think this is a good decision from Mahdi because he's already quite behind on, on Lance or Mana, I should say, because of that acceleration of Baptiste in turn one with the Mox Sapphire and the Soul Ring. And now, of course, it's up to Baptiste to see what he can do. He's just passing turns. So this is not too bad for Mahdi. Let's hope he can find a land drop. Or a Mox or something. At least he can swing in for two, but perhaps Baptiste has a source as well. It would be ideal for Mahdi here to at least play out a second blue source that would give him counter capability. Look at the hands move. He's thinking about it. <laughs> oh, he's first going to attack. That's kind of giving me a signal that maybe he doesn't have the land. Because I think I would have first played out a land here. Especially if it has a blue source to keep counter magic up. So I wonder if Mahdi has it. Perhaps Mahdi has, for example, a Demonic Tutor in hand and is thinking about, do I want to play that right now? Do I want to tap out? I mean, it is risky because Baptiste has blue mana open. Okay, tapping both. Going to go to 17. And... Oh, there's a Disenchant on the Soul Ring. Which is slowing Baptiste down a little bit. I mean, taking care of the Sol Ring means his Brain Geyser becomes less powerful, and also it'll take him a longer time to uh, to play out, for example, a Sarah Angel. And oh, forget what I said. <laughs> he is ramping up again. And also, I wanted to say, it's going to be harder for Baptiste to play something out and keep counter uh, mana open. Does Mahdi have an answer for the Sarah Angel? That's a question. Already played out one sorts, of course, on the Surrendip. And I mean, the biggest problem for Mahdi here really is Lance. I mean, he can take a couple of hits from the Angel, who's still on 16, or 17, actually. The problem here is Lance. And this is kind of what I talked about in the deck deck as well, as how these games are going to be decided. It's luck of the draw is definitely going to have a huge influence in these mirror matches. And we can here see Mahdi being very unlucky. And Baptiste, I mean, not even being that lucky. Yes, he gets some ramp, but, you know, I think he can draw even better than this, obviously, with these decks. So Mahdi dropping to 12 now after the attack of the Sarah Angel. Okay, there's at least some mana. It's not a blue source, though. 
But, you know, he can now, for example, play out a surrender. It does mean that he takes the damage. He's going to go to 11 from his own city. And, okay, there's a Chaos Orb. Okay, that's something. I'm expecting a counter spell here from Baptiste. Potentially, Baptiste can also have a Disenchant, of course. He's given the thumbs up. Is there going to be a response now? There's no response. Okay, we're going to see a flip in the finals. Love this stuff. Let's have a look at how Mari flips. Taking his time, of course. Oh, what a nice flip. And really nice altitude as well. I like this. And he's hitting for four. There is a side blast on one of the lions. It does mean two damage for Baptiste from his own side blast and two damage from the lion. So it's going to drop to 15. And there's a little bit of hope again for Mari. I believe he's got two cards in hand now. And is that three cards for Baptiste? He's asking now as well how many cards in hand. There's a mind twist. Oh, That is pretty big. Ooh, losing two cards. Especially that Surrender would have been a great play next turn to put some pressure on Baptiste. Baptiste, of course, being on 15. And there's just a pass. At least Mari still has the line, but he now needs like an Ancestral Recall or something to kind of get back into this. First, there's the attack. So Baptiste dropping to 13. There is a Basic Plains, Alter by Mark Poole there with the Crusade Knight. There we see a Savannah Lines, which is good enough for Baptiste. I mean, both players are top decking with the big difference that Baptiste is one mana source up and he's got more cards in hand. There's the pass by Mari. There's the attack. Is he going to trade? Remember, Mari is on a lower life total. And this is difficult. Because it's the only thing that Mari has here. He is trading. I think it makes sense since he's on the lower life total. There is a Mishra's Factory. Yeah, that is annoying. That was to be expected, of course. Baptiste having more cards, offering to trade. Because probably it's better for him than for Mari. There we see a Tundra. Looking at his one card. I mean, let's say it's a Sarah Angel for sake of argument. Because he's got enough mana to cast one. Do you really want to play it out with all those blue mana open on the side of Baptiste? Do you want to take the risk? Looks like it's another card, though. Oh, it, is it a Sarah Angel? Oh, it's a Brain Geyser. That's even better. If this card, and it works, of course, after that Chaos Orb, Mahdi got some information. Probably knowing that, hey, Baptiste does not have a counter spell. This is a great, this is a turning point in the match, actually. Because now Mahdi is, is kind of getting on the same footing. Oh, Ancestral Recall. This is so brutal for Mari here. Had a moment where both players kind of had the same amount of cards in hand, which is so important in, in mirror matches like this. But then Baptiste finds the Ancestral Recall, and also looking at Mari being completely tapped out, it's ideal. He can also swing in for two. Maybe, probably just going to pass turn, wanting to keep Counter Magic open here. And Mari is dropping again. Dropping to eight. Making matters worse here with the Savannah line. There is ooh, a Black Lotus Time Walk. Does he have this already? No, I think Mahdi's going to be on one if he swings. But what a turn for Baptiste. This was insane. Attacking for seven. It's going to drop to one. It's so interesting to see how quickly these games can swing. It, just like a couple of seconds ago, I was saying, okay, Mari might get back into this with that well-timed Brain Geyser, but then there was the Ancestral Recall, the Time Walk from Baptiste, and all the damage, of course, and that's put Mari down all the way to just one measly life. And now he's passing turn. I mean, if you're Mari, what can you do? City of Brass, he can no longer use, because it'll kill himself. Balance is the only card. He can play Balance and then Strip Mine on the Factory and of course then hope that Baptiste doesn't have a counter spell. But he has no choice at this point if he has a Balance, of course. I mean, he's not giving up yet, so I guess there is an out for him. Are we going to see a Balance? There is a balance. Okay, are we going to see a counter? No counterspell. Okay. 
Wow! This is going much better than I expected. So, both players having four lands, both players having the same amount of cards in hand as well. And I mean, this balance, this is huge, and he has the strip mine, remember, for the Mishra's factory on the side of Baptiste. There's the pass. I mean, Baptiste knows if I animate an attack, he's just gonna strip it. Ancestral Recall, and there is a counterspell. So, Baptiste did find a counterspell with that top deck. Wow, this is quite, this is an exciting game one. I mean, you know, Mari has been behind most of the time. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, he's starting to draw too many cards here. <laughs> Probably on autopilot after the recall. And of course, Mari here apologizing for his mistake. What I have sometimes, and maybe you, you recognize this as well, the wishful thinking uh, uh, situation that kind of comes into your mind when you're behind so far. You start to think, what if I can just get this in, get that in? And then sometimes that leads to some mistakes. There we see a draw, and, and that Mishra's factory is quite good here on the side of Mani. I wonder if on end step he's going to use the strip mine. Actually, he doesn't have to do it on end step. He can just wait. But I wonder if he's going to choose to attack with the factory. I'm talking about Mahdi here. Then again, why would he want to be the aggressor at the moment? He's on one, Baptiste on 12. Two cards in hand for him. And he is going to use it, so that means he's probably going to swing it for two here. Animating the factory. There he goes. And Baptiste dropping to 10. There is a Savannah Lions. That's something. If you're Mahdi, do you want to kill the lines here on the spot? I don't think you do. It's just too much risk. Remember, Mahdi is still just on one. So he should, you know, untap the factory exactly. Going to three cards, making it kind of a show here. And this is the thing, both of these players have not splashed red in their line dip. We, we saw that a few times at this tournament where people chose to play red in the deck as well. And Oh, tapping five, Sarah Angel. And he's, he's taking a big risk. Baptiste checking the manas. He's taking a big risk because if Baptiste has a sword here or if he draws a sword, stop decks it. Then again, then, then Manny gains some life, of course, so he gets time as well. Obviously, if you're Baptiste and you have a sword, you would sword the angel here and then attack for two. He would go to five, take two damage, go to three. Again, Mahdi is tapped out, so he doesn't have to worry about a potential counter spell. There's the attack. Interesting. He has to block, of course. And then are we going to see a balance now? Could use a balance to get rid of the Sarah Angel. First playing a card, so he wants to force Mahdi to discard a card. Exactly, there's the balance. And he has four lands, so he's got to put one away, putting the basic planes away. And Mahdi has to discard. So this is, this is a pretty good balance from Baptiste. Takes care of the Sarah Angel, forces Mahdi to discard a card. Mahdi at least still has the factory. Discarding a counter spell there. And there is the untap. What an exciting game one. And so many swings here. There's the attack for two. Baptiste dropping to eight. And there's the pass. Wow, I mean, Mahdi fighting his way back here. Four more turns, four more swings, and it's over. It's a lot, though, four more swings. There's the attack. Are we going to see Disenchant? Okay, Swords. At least it's some life gain here for Mahdi. But I, no, Mahdi doesn't have two blue open, of course, to counter. And Power Sync is not going to work here. So he's going to go up to three. So that means he can use the City of Brass again, I guess. 
Both players, of course, also playing with Psy Blasts. And Mari being in Psy Blast range for a while now. Playing a City of Brass in the pass. And also Baptiste just passing here. So this is good news for Mari. And maybe Baptiste just has some answers in hand. Perhaps, you know, Counterspell and Disenchant, something like that. There we see Disenchant on the blue source. And Mahdi also passing turn, so both players kind of in top decking mode again. It's just hard to see what's in the hand of Baptiste there. There is a factory. Okay, these factories can be decisive at this stage in the game. There is a pass. The question, of course, is can Mahdi protect his factory? At least he can tap a City of Brasses again now for, for blue sources. He's on three. I mean, it's not something you want to do, but I mean, three or two doesn't really matter that much. There's an activation. There's a Swords. And are we going to see a counter spell? No, there's not a Swords. He's waiting for him to tap, of course. That is the better play to make. There's the attack. Now we're going to see the Swords. There's the Swords. Is there going to be a counter spell? That's kind of interesting, right? No, he's letting it die. He's going to take two more. Both of those should be removed from the game, by the way, if I'm not mistaken. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, there they go. Removed from the game. Because that's important because both players are playing with Time Twister and then you shuffle your whole graveyard back in. But of course, not the cards removed by Swords to Plowshares. Here we see a factory from Baptiste. That's of course dangerous here for Mahdi. He's on five, so Baptiste needs three swings in total with this factory. And there he goes, swinging in here. Going to put Mahdi on three, unless he's got a disenchant or a sword. I think this is going to be a disenchant. He's already putting it away. There's another land on the side of Baptiste. I don't believe I saw a Jam Day Tome in either of the decks. Usually in these control games, a Jam Day Tome can be... Uh, a game changer as well, but um, they're not playing with it, so <laughs> it's not going to mean anything. Three cards in hand for Baptiste here. There's a strip mine, so that's a very good weapon against those factories, of course. Baptiste on eight, Mani on five. Tapping. Ooh, are we going to see Brain Geyser? There is a Brain Geyser with counter protection as well. Two blue open there. So I wonder if we're going to see a counter spell. And I wonder if we're going to see a counter to counter spell. I think we're going to see a power sink here. And finally, that power sink can actually do something. So, power sink, one of the differences, of course, between these two decks. Mani playing two power sink, Baptiste playing zero. So, there we see the power sink, counter spell. Yeah. As to be expected. I mean, these players are very patient. They're not going to play out a Brain Geyser at this stage in the game without counter backup. And I think that was even the reason why Baptiste kept out playing Lance at a certain point, where you think maybe it's better to just keep the Lance in hand. So he's got four cards now. He's on seven. Maddie's on five. So after this Brain Geyser, Baptiste is definitely in favor again. Now, the good news for Maddie, at least, is that Baptiste cannot counter at this point. So a nice, big, fat Sarah Angel would be really sweet right now. He's already lost one, playing two in total. There's just a pass turn, though. And this is very good news for Baptiste, this pass turn. We see a Mox Ruby there, one of the cards, and he's just passing. Counterspell there in the hand of Baptiste, I believe. So no pressure on the board from Baptiste. There's a pass by Mahdi.
There is a City of Brass and just a pass. And a pass from Maddy as well. So both players just kind of passing, trying to find their creatures to put some pressure on. I think I see a Library of Alexandria in the hand of Baptiste there. So he can go up to seven and then play the library. Yeah, there's that library. And he's just passing turn. Ooh. So we could see an active Loa being decisive here, even this late in the game. Usually when you draw Loa this late in the game, it's not very impactful. There's the Loa, it's got seven in hand then. There's a pass. This is a big problem for Mahdi. And Mahdi uh, tapping his cards here, trying to find some kind of solution to the library. But just drawing a card now, taking his turn. I mean, he's got a full grip of cards. Let's see if he can do anything with it. There is an underground C and just a pass turn. So there we see the activation of the Loa on end step here, of course, by Baptiste going to eight cards in hand and then going to draw into card nine now, taking his turn. Nine cards. Asking Maddie, how many cards do you have in hand? Asking again, how many cards? So you want to be absolutely sure, I guess. This is the finals. So five cards in hand for Maddie. Playing a land, that's a Tundra. Eight cards in hand still. Counting his mana, probably wants to find a way to play something out and keep mana open for counter magic and keep the Loa open to draw a card. He could do that actually, he could play out a Sarah Angel and keep enough mana open to counter and to use the Loa. So going through the motion again. I think that's a Mox Pearl I see there. So he could have just dropped the Pearl and pass. Having seven in hand still used the Loa. Exactly there we see the drop of the Mox Pearl. And there's the pass. So Mahdi taking card number six. There is his Savannah Alliance. Okay. And he's going to draw a card first, of course, before responding. I'm just expecting a plow. I don't think you want to use a counter spell for Savannah Alliance. If it is a plow, he can, of course, wait as well. Unless he wants to already empty his hand. So he's got eight, goes back up to nine again. Loa is such a powerful card. There is a factory. Okay, these factories are valuable. We see a disenchant in hand of Baptiste. That's one of the cards he's got. Not very relevant at the moment. We see a basic island. And this is this is the thing, of course, with Loa. It's fantastic because you've got so many cards in hand, but it also kind of makes it difficult because you've got so many choices. You want to make sure you make the right decision. This is the finals. It's not just a casual match at a coffee table. He's going to tap five, so I'm expecting a Sarah Angel here. There we see the Sarah Angel. And I really wonder how Mahdi is going to respond. Does he have a counter spell? First question. Then does he want to use it? Maybe he does, because then counter the counter spell. Does he have a swords? Etc., etc. It looks like Mahdi is not going to respond to this. So that means he doesn't have a counterspell or doesn't want to use the counterspell yet. He could also play his swords in his own main. 
play an extra land out to potentially have enough mana to then play a power sink to counter a potential counter spell on the source that he's going to play out. That could be a line of play here. There we see a source to plowshares. And now we're going to see a counter spell, right? So first, of course, to draw the card goes to eight. I think he actually found a counter spell there. No, it's going to die. I thought I saw a counter spell. I mean, that could mean two things. Or the card that I thought he drew is not a counter spell, which is very possible, because as you can see, it's really hard to see. Or Baptiste says, you know what, I don't want to use a counter spell on this. I've got more creatures to cast. And of course, we don't see an attack by the Savannah Alliance, by the way, because Baptiste has that Mishra's Factory. I mean, maybe that, that card was a Psyblast, for example. It's really tough to see from this position. Counting his cards again. There is a basic island. And there's a Serendip Afrit. So that will do the job as well. It needs two turns, just like the Sarah. So it doesn't matter much at this stage in the game whether it's a Sarah Angel or a Serendip. Seven in hand. And gonna pass. So Mari has again a problem that he needs to solve. And we basically see this the entire game, right? Baptiste brings the problems. Mari has to find solutions. There is an answer. He's going to draw a card. Does he have a counter spell? And if so, is he going to use it now to protect it? He's going to go through his deck. Probably going to try to see how many creatures he already played out. Because it's important, of course. At a certain point, you run out of creatures. And this deck wants to win with combat damage. There's no diary. Well, it can win with a side blast. That's true. So, I wonder how many side blasts he's played out. Again, asking how many cards he have in hand. Baptiste is a super careful player. Like, he wants to be 100% sure of everything, right? And that's probably the reason why he's in the finals. He's not going to rush through anything. You know, he'd rather keep two counter spells open than, for example, deal two extra points of damage and only keep one counter spell open. We actually saw that, I believe, in the semi-final match between Baptiste, Baptiste and D. And he's allowing this Swords to happen. There's a Swords on the Lion. So he's now going to go with the Factory Plan. That is interesting. So he's going to go to 7. And he's going to take his turn. I think now he's going to draw back up to 7 again. I wonder if he now wants to attack with the factory. Animating, attacking. Okay, so he's now on the factory plan. He's like, okay, I lost a Surrender and an Angel. Doesn't matter. Because I took care of the lines. So now I can swing in with the, uh, with the factory. As long as I have something to deal damage with, it's fine. He's going to drop to, to five again. Got, of course, two life from the uh, swords on the lines earlier. There's a Mox Jet. And a pass turn. And I have to say, so far I haven't seen a single decision by either of the players that I don't understand. I think both players are, are taking the max out of their cards and out of the situation. And remember, the top eight is timeless here at the Northern Paladins Cup, so that means the final is timeless as well. When you play in the Swiss rounds, you've got a 50 minute, um, 50 minutes time to, uh, to finish your, your match. But that's not the case here in the, in the top eight and in the finals. So we see mox number four here by Mahdi and just a pass turn. 
I mean, for Mahdi, this is such a bad scenario because every turn that your opponent has an active low, he's going to get more and more ahead in the game. And Mahdi knows this, of course. But if you have nothing against it, you have nothing against it. There's another factory. So he could swing in for three here, then finish it potentially next turn. Attacking here with the 2-2. Two -two. Are we going to see a disenchant? Or something? Cyblast. Ooh, that's interesting. That's some serious firepower. Is he going to counter this? He could say, you know what? I'm going to allow it. Because you're taking two damage anyway. You're going to drop to three. And the next turn, I'm going to attack with my factory. Yeah. So I kind of understand Baptiste allowing this. So he's going to three. I also understand the decision by Mahdi, by the way. You have to do something or else you're dead next turn. So it's a good decision. This buys him an extra turn. So again, from both players, I can see the logic in their plays. Does Mahdi have something of a creature to block that factory? Gonna tap a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> what is this gonna be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, he's already played out his brain geyser earlier in the game, so that cannot be it. Again, counting the mana. I wonder what he wants to do. Is he going to tap it all or is he just going to count it again? He's really in the tank here. Tapping it. Oh, mind twist. Didn't think about that. He's going to go to card number eight. I'm sure he's got counter protection for this mind twist. So here we see the first counter spell. I'm expecting a second counter spell. Exactly. Are we going to see a third counter spell? Yeah, we're going to see a third counter spell. Are we going to see another? No. Okay. I wouldn't have been surprised if Mahdi even had another counter spell. And I mean, if you're Mahdi and, and you're this far behind with that active Loa, you're like, okay, you got to take a risk. You know, you, you, of course you can just wait and, and wait until you die, but you got to take a risk. So again, I understand this mind twist game, and at least he had one counter spell as a backup. But yeah, you know, chances are very slim that Baptiste doesn't have a counter spell for that counter spell. So there is a demonic tutor. Is he going to look up a side blast for the game? Yep, that's a side blast. That is game number one. Oh man, what a thriller of a match this has been. Well, game this has been, because the match is not over yet. Both players are going to go uh, into their sideboards, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two of the finals of the Northern Paladin Cup between Baptiste on the left and Mahdi on the right. So Baptiste is one game up. Mahdi is on the plate. Looks like both players are keeping their hand. Tundra and again a Savannah line. So the same kind of opening we saw Mahdi... Uh, show in game number one. Ooh, Aloha. Oh, man. Aloha. And he's immediately going to go to card eight. Probably means he's got a Mox in hand as well. Yeah, there we see a Mox. Mox Ruby in this case passing turn. This is tough for Mari. You're deciding game. Remember, if Baptiste wins this, he wins the entire tournament. Looks like we're going to see a Mox here by Mahdi. I mean, I guess if you're Mahdi, you just want to put as much pressure on the board as you can. Hopefully you surrender a Freet right now. Okay, there's a time walk. That's something. Going to take an extra turn, deal two more points of damage, and hopefully he can find a creature. There we see a maze of it from the sideboard, probably. And a pass. Although, does he play a maze main? I believe he does. I'm not quite sure now. Anyway, the bad news for Mahdi here is that he couldn't find 
another threat. On the other hand, maybe he wants to keep mana open for counter magic. That's, of course, an option as well. But this is far from an ideal start for Mahdi here. Looking down at that Loa. There is a Tundra, so I believe seven in hand now. Baptiste gonna find another card, meaning he probably has another play. Because you don't want to just discard a card. There is the Savannah Lines. Are we gonna see a quick Swords here? I think we do, yeah. There's the Swords. The problem here is for mine, of course, it means that Baptiste goes back up to 18, he's going to attack, he's going to be on 16, so it's not really changing anything. And you kind of want to put full pressure on Baptiste, forcing him to get off the lower plan. Okay, there's a second lion and still two blue open to counter. That's actually pretty good. And then a pass here. But I think if you're Mahdi, you really don't want to have a maze right now. Remember the power sinks that he plays with as well. You just want to have lands. It makes your power sink better, it makes your counter spells better, it makes your brain geyser better. But let's first see what Baptiste can do. I believe he's got eight in hand at, eight in hand at the moment. Gonna first of course play out a land. I believe it's an underground C and a pass turn. Okay, so seven in hand for Baptiste. Mahdi could swing in for four here, that would be really nice for him. The Dutchman attacking for four. And of course, Baptiste drawing a card before casting a potential Swords to Plowshares. But he's not. He's taking the damage. Dropping to 12. So from 16 to 12. And doing the Swords on the end step. The reason for that is that Baptiste wants to keep his counter magic mana open as long as he can. So that makes absolute sense. And the line is gone. And Maddie is going to go to 22. There is a maze of if and a pass, but this maze is pretty good for Baptiste. Because remember, if you're Baptiste with the active Loa, you don't mind if the game's kind of in a stall, because you're going to win eventually because of your card advantage. There we see another Savannah Lines. Are we going to see a response here by Baptiste? No, we're not. He's like, okay, that's fine. I've got the maze. I've got more stuff in hand. I can deal with the line. There's the attack. There's the untap with the maze. There's the pass. And first, of course, a draw card on end step. So Baptiste is going to go back up to nine again. Maybe it's nice to uh, to tell you guys that uh, Richard Garfield loved Loa so much that when he built a deck, he just put four Library of Alexandrias in his deck, which is insane, of course. There's the discard. So he's going back to seven again. He's got that Mishra's Factory. There's the Black Lotus. Gonna attack with both. The Factory still having Summoning Sickness. It cannot pump itself. So I'm expecting Baptiste here just to take two damage, sending one back. That's exactly what he does. Or is he gonna do something else? He is gonna animate. Oh, he didn't have Summoning Sickness yet. I guess he didn't. There's a Disenchant. Can he counter Disenchant? He's not gonna. So he's going to take the damage, going to go to 10. And there's a pass. <laughs> Asking how many cards Mahdi has in hand. I believe there are two cards just for Mahdi. And this is something we've seen in game one, we're seeing in game two. Again, it's just a huge card advantage for Baptiste all the time. Okay. 
going through his cards again. Having a balancing hand there, but that's of course a terrible card right now for Baptiste because it means he would go off the low up land just to kill two lines. So Baptiste really in the tank here. He's got to decide if he wants to discard or if he wants to play something out. And does he want to discard the balance? I mean, balance is really bad right now because he's the active low up player. But what if there's a moment in the game where, you know, Maddie manages to get rid of the loa or cuts his hand size down or whatever? Then all of a sudden, the balance becomes better. Okay, he is deciding to discard the balance and pass. So Mahdi is first going to swing with both lines, kind of going to see how, that, how that's going to work out for him. We see an extra draw first by Baptiste, then a maze on one of the lines, and taking two is going to drop to eight. So Baptiste on eight, Mahdi is still on 22, but the problem, of course, is that Loa. And there's the pass turn by Mahdi. There's a disenchant on the Black Lotus. That is a tough situation for Mahdi. I mean, do you really want to use a counter spell to protect your Lotus at this point? He's probably cracking it for three blue. Ooh, playing, that's interesting, playing a side blast, but there's a counter spell though, and there's a counter spell on the counter spell. So he's playing a side blast on the life total of Baptiste. Baptiste dropping to three after a double counter spell. So there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps here for Mahdi. Remember, Mahdi is one game down, needs to win this if he wants to stay alive in this match. And this happens often with the active Loa player. I mean, you've got a huge card advantage, but the problem is, you know, you don't want to get off the card advantage tra train, so you do take a lot of damage, and, and Mari has successfully done so, put him on three. And I think the side blast was a really nice reaction, by the way, of uh, Baptiste disenchanting the Black Lotus. Okay, there's a demonic tutor. I wonder what he's going to tutor for. He already has a lots, of, lots of cards in hand. So first he's going to draw a card, going to go to eight. Then plays a land, so he's got seven in hand. He is on three lives, so I guess he wants to do something against those lines. Probably just the swords. Okay, swords on one of the lines. So that means two more life, and of course it has to be removed from the game here. He 
again. Somebody's pointing that out right now. I think it's really good to do that because when you, if you get a mind twist or something else, you know, you start shuffling it back in and you find out, oh no, I wasn't supposed to. And you get all these awkward situations in the game. There we see the attack, the use of the maze. Probably just a pass here by Mahdi, two cards in hand. He is very close. If he can just find the tiniest of openings, he could win game number two here and still be in the race of becoming uh, the champion here in Groningen. Baptiste going to draw to eight. I mean, things are looking really good for Baptiste despite the fact he's only on three, but that's a life total. It's about control and card advantage. And Baptiste has both at this point. Tons of cards in hand, active Loa, Mace on the board to deal with the Lions. See a Soul Ring in hand there for Baptiste, which always is an easy card to just play out without having to discard anything. He's got eight cards in hand at the moment. <clears throat> Going through the deck of Mari. Checking how many counter spells he's already played out. I believe he's played two counter spells out so far. <laughs> Tapping a red. Okay, there's the soul ring we talked about. Oh, is he going to play Sarah Angel? There is a Sarah Angel. Interesting move. Still keeping some mana open to counter though. Mahdi, two cards in hand. Does he have a counter spell or swords? Taking the turn, drawing the card. And okay, there's a Swords expecting to see a counter spell here. No, we're not. Maybe Baptiste, Baptiste wants to gain some life. I mean, in a way, it's kind of ideal, isn't it? You're like, you're on three, you're behind on life. And then, you know, just by playing a Sarah Angel, you know your opponent has to, you know, spend a card on it and you're going to gain some life. I mean, it's not too bad of a deal. I mean, being on three or seven is a big difference. And remember, he has the active Loa. We see him tapping five. Is he going to cast, for example, a Brain Geyser for three? That could be an option. I think it's a Brain Geyser there. There's a Brain Geyser for three. So that's, that was one of the reasons why he, he played out more cards than usual, because he probably knew, okay, I've got the Brain Geyser, I can refill my hand and uh, have my active Loa again. There seems to be no response from, from Mari. So three cards here for Baptiste. Playing a land, going back to seven, I believe. And I'm expecting him to just pass, and on the end step he can use a low again. What is interesting here, by the way, is that Mahdi now has a Mishra's Factory and is a Venom Alliance. There's the pass turn. So he can try not to attack with both, try to deal some damage. There's the activation. He's going to swing for four. Probably Maze on the line. Are we going to see a disenchant here? There's a Psyblast as well in hand. Interesting, he's not going to draw a card first. He wants to keep... That actually makes sense because he wants to keep counter magic open. 
He's gonna play the Psy Blast. That means he is gonna take two damage though. He is gonna drop to five. He's gonna send back the Lions. Tapping, what are we gonna see? Another lion. No counter spell by Baptiste. Not quite sure how many cards he's gonna hand, perhaps seven now? I think so. Yeah, gonna draw card number eight. Went to six cards, of course, after playing out the Psy Blast earlier. Tapping five. Are we going to see another Sarah? Okay, there's another Sarah Angel. Remember, Mani does have that Maze of If. The biggest problem here for him now is that that Sarah is, of course, a great blocker for his lines. He really wants to get rid of the Sarah, start attacking again. There is an underground sea. One card in hand, and there's the pastor. Untap here for Baptiste. Can he find, for example, a surrender here to play out? There's the attack, there's the maze activation, so no damage. Counting his cards, playing a lion. Drawing an extra card, you're having seven in hand, going back up to eight, I see a Swords there, a basic island, playing out the basic island, passing turn seven in hand. There's an Ancestral Recall, expecting a counter spell here, there's the counter spell on the Recall. I mean, it's all about card advantage and Baptiste just has it. We saw that in game one, we're seeing that in game two. He's the player constantly with the most cards in hand, meaning having the most options, having the most answers, being able to pressure the board. And you know, despite Mati playing it well and being on 22, it doesn't really matter that much. There's an ancestral recall here by Baptiste to make matters worse here for Mati. There's the untap. I don't know how many cards he's got in hand right now, but it's a lot. It's a lot of cards. <laughs> I can tell you that. He's counting it now himself. Probably eight or nine, right? Something like that. If he can find a second flyer. Oh, this is even better. A strip mine on the maze. And this is one of the things that's difficult about the maze. You can only use it in combat, right? So you can just play your strip, strip it, and then you go to combat and you attack. So this is going to be a swing for four, meaning Mati will probably drop to 18 here. There's the attack. And he's dropping to 18. There's a discard of a City of Brass and a Pastor. I mean, this is just really bad for Mati. You know, active Loa against you, Sarah against you. Um, your opponent has seven in hand. So, you know, if you're going to play a Swords against the Angel, you're probably going to see a Counterspell. you got to try, of course. It, it, you cannot do nothing. Are we going to see a Psy Blast? So, Psy Blast here on the Angel. Look at the Altar, by the way. It's really cool. It's a Force of Nature, I believe. He's going to draw a card. Then, are we going to see a Counterspell? Yep, there's the counter spell. And now Baptiste gets to untap again and he can attack. And remember, look at the life total of Baptiste, right? He's on five. If 
you know, if Mari could just have some luck, have some better momentum in the game, could have used that side blast to put Baptiste on one and, you know, maybe find some way to squeeze in that last point of damage. But uh, it's not meant to be here. It's going to drop to 14. It's looking very bad here for Mari. He needs kind of a miracle. Because even, like, even a balance, which is great if he can somehow squeeze it in, you know, because it's probably going to get countered by Baptiste, but even a balance wouldn't be ideal because Mari's got two lines himself as well. And here's the attack. He's going to drop to 10, I believe. So now it's going to go really, really quickly, right? Like a minute ago, Mari was still on 22. Now already he's on 10 after three attacks by the Sarah Angel and a pastor. And, and, you know, another thing about the whole balance play is usually when you have a balance, you think, okay, I'm just going to attack with all my creatures, lose my creatures, then play the balance so it's also a board wipe. In this case, that strategy would be super risky because if Baptiste has a counter spell, he can just make favorable blocks on the Savannah lines of Mari and then counter the balance. And I think if, if you're Mati here, your best bet, ooh, what are we going to see here? Are we going to see Brain Geyser, Sarah Angel, Sarah Angel? I'm expecting a counter spell here. Going to draw a card. He's got a counter spell in hand. The question is, does he want to use it? No, he doesn't. He's going to untap, take his turn. Does it mean that he's got a Swords in hand instead? Tapping two, tapping, ooh, tapping four. What are we going to see? Ooh, Control Magic! This is a card from the sideboard! Wow, this is good! Control Magic on the Sarah Angel! Ooh! That must hurt for Mari. He was already down, and now he's also drowning, I would say. He's gonna go to six. He's gonna try to use as many dice as possible. Maybe that gives him a feeling that he's still on a high life total, but he's not. He's actually still on six. He's gonna untap here. Is this the end of the road for Mahdi? He has to find at least a disenchant for the control magic and then just hope that Baptiste doesn't have a counter spell. I think Baptiste has already played out at least two counter spells, maybe three. He's playing four counter spells and a mana drain. So, I mean, there is, of course, a point in the game where Baptiste is running out of counter spells. Mahdi having two cards in hand. This could be his last turn here at the tournament. Looks like he wants to tap two for a disenchant. I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do. Okay, there he goes. There's the disenchant. First, of course, Baptiste is going to draw a card, and I'm, in, I'm expecting him to have a counterspell here. Yeah, there's the counterspell. Now the question is, does Mari have a counterspell? And he needs a counterspell. Power Sync is not going to cut it here. He needs good old-fashioned counterspell. He's got a Demonic Tutor. There's a Mana Drain on the Demonic Tutor. and Yeah, it was already over, but now it's over, over. I think with the Demonic Tutor, what could he he have looked up, actually? Because he only had one mana left to spend. A Maze of If, of course. Playing a Maze. It would have bought him an extra turn. That's it! Mighty saying, you know, you've got this. That Control Magic was brutal, but obviously this Game 2 was won because of the Loa. And, uh, and well played by both players. Thank you, guys for showing your skills right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And I also want to give a shout out to Jasper, Nick and Coast. They are the organizers of the Paladins of the North Cup. This tournament was held in Groningen, the Netherlands. And um, I think it's going to be held again next year. So if you're, if you're in the Netherlands, if you're close by, this is definitely a tournament you would want to visit. Okay, well, thank you all for watching and congratulations to Baptiste for winning the Northern Paladins Cup. That was the finals of the Northern Paladins Cup, and here you can see the winning deck by Baptiste. Wow, and what a video series this has been. 
Oh man, oh, I really enjoyed making these and uh, I want to give a special thanks to Dion because it's his beautiful camera that actually recorded all these matches and you can really see an improvement in quality. Talking about that, uh, I'm actually trying to get one of these cameras myself as well so that when I stream or when I visit an event, I can show you high quality footage. But obviously I need some financial support to get to, the, to that amount so I can buy that camera. So I would like to ask you to consider becoming a patron of the channel. And how does that work? Well, it's actually quite simple. Here you can see a screenshot of my Timmy Talks Patreon page and there's probably a, a link popping up right now, an info card. And if you click on an info card, it'll take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can read all about, you know, how you can support my channel. It already starts with just $1 a month. There are also some perks there if you decide to become a patron. One of those is that you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and also that you get access to all the Timmy Talks online events. So all the online tournaments that I organize, you can become a part of that by becoming a sponsor of the show. And of course, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? Well, actually this end scroll. Let's take a look at our fantastic, wunderbar, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ikitus, ikitus, somba kazi. 